For more on what Wall Street is watching this week is Wall Street reporter Shanali Basik. Investors certainly keep an eye on Washington to get details on the next stimulus package. So Shanali, uh, what do we know thus far? So we know that they really have to figure it out by the end of this week because by December 11th, then the real spending package that currently exists runs out. Why does this matter? Because the PPP program, which made so much aid available to small businesses, most businesses told the National Federation of Independent Business that they ran out of money by late October. So you could say that this is months behind. It's badly needed, and even now it's late for a lot of businesses. So we want to see it done and in scale by the end of the year. Look, I think the picture has certainly changed for the prospect of actually seeing some sort of stimulus from Washington over the last few weeks based on your reporting, based on the sources that you talk to. What are expectations in, on Wall Street? So the, the, Wall Street's doing well, right? Right. Wall Street itself is doing pretty well. But the more that the consumer starts to lag behind and the more that unemployment remains very high and GDP lags, that will eventually start to weigh on Wall Street. And, and what I found so interesting last week was we had this just dismal jobs report, right? It missed by like a couple hundred thousand uh, jobs. It, but we saw stocks move higher on that because investors were optimistic that hey, this could actually put some pressure on lawmakers to, to pass a stimulus sooner than later. Is that something that we're seeing as, as far as widespread optimism on, this, on the sources that you talk to? Uh, there is hope for a stimulus, but again, that question of how much yeah. stimulus, the good thing is that both sides of the aisle agree that small businesses need the funds, and that is something that everybody can agree on. But what about state and local governments? They hire a lot of people as well that, if there's not enough aid, could potentially drag on more employment. And then also, some hard-hit sectors, even with money, it's unclear how they'll do, because since stimulus is taking so long, and since there's so little of it compared to before, it could uh, really drag on holiday spending. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. How does it tie into holiday spending and potentially dragging on holiday spending? Well, it's kind of as simple as, if you don't have money, you can't spend money, yeah. right? That's part of of it. But also remember, a lot of these retailers are really struggling, uh, especially if they don't have massive online presences. So you're seeing really popular names you've known forever, right? Uh, an example, I'm from Paramus, New Jersey, highest retail sales by zip code in parts of Amer in, in America. Uh, Lord & Taylor closing, my mother's gone there forever. Those kinds of stories are popping up all across America, where the retailers you've known forever, it's not as simple. And they're also getting shipments late. So there's a very complicated retail story here, and it will drag until next year. Look, we had this uh, really similar interaction over the weekend. We went to, to buy our, our, our baby son new shoes. And the person at the local shoe store was like, we have had a terrible, terrible year. We're actually moving locations because we can't afford this location anymore. And we haven't gotten any more funding from the government. So it's not just the big businesses. It's especially the small businesses that we're seeing take a hit right now. Um, look. Bankruptcies. You mentioned Lord & Taylor, for example. Um, it's been a big year for bankruptcies, but also for IPOs, which is really strange to see that disconnect there, right? It could be a, potentially a record it's year here. It's incredible, yeah. right? We are on track to have a record December for IPOs. And for the last couple of months, the New York Stock Exchange has been telling us they have never seen a time like this. So if you think about wow. this, part of this is an investor search for yield. Interest rates are very low, where else do you make money besides in the stock market and on some of these high-flying tech names? And the funny thing about IPOs is that a lot of it has to do with investor sentiment. If investors are willing to buy, then yes, right now is absolutely the right time to be selling. So just a, just a few minutes ago, we saw a headline, Airbnb boosts IPO price range to $56 to $60 a share from $44 to $50 a share. This is just a, a massive, massive amount of money that the company is planning on raising, but it's only going to be the fourth biggest of the year, right? Yes, and, and to be fair also, uh, there has been, and it's actually less than that, it's not even close to the fourth biggest because there are a lot of IPOs that we've seen abroad, there are a lot of IPOs we've seen in other industries, and we have a lot of money seen for SPACs as well. So when you count for all of that money right. raised, it's, it's just an incredible amount of money across the world in different types of vehicles, this is just the big, one of the biggest tech IPOs. Okay, so explain the disconnect here uh, for, for our viewers. Why is it such a good time to, to be a company going public, to raise money from investors, but at the same time such a bad time to have a small business here in the U.S.? So if you think about it, this whole year has been a mess. <laughs> but if you look at the VIX, which is the classic Wall Street fear gauge, it gives you a sense of how volatile the markets are, it's lower than it was 
significantly at the highest peaks of this year. We also have generally the election done, this kind of middle ground period before a new administration, no major risks mm. to these businesses coming up, and also people looking for yield, like we had mentioned. So you have uh, Airbnb, right, which is very different than DoorDash, which has benefited from this pandemic. Airbnb has proven it can hold on at a tough time. Revenue in the third quarter only declined by about 18%, whereas Marriott and others showed much bigger declines. So if they're able to pivot, as Patrick Clark, our Bloomberg reporter, calls it the pandemic pivot, mm. uh, they're able to prove that they could be okay. They, they just made it through a pandemic. Yeah, and also absolutely shocking to see that, that the company raised debt just a few months ago, valuing it at $18 billion, and the IPO could potentially value it at, at like twice that. Which is, uh, which is just shocking to see that quick of a turnaround. I mean, Airbnb weathered the pandemic incredibly well. Well, these big companies, remember, and Airbnb was able to raise that rescue financing. Very big investors on Wall Street put their faith in this company. Once the Fed stepped in, it created a lot of faith for these bigger companies being able to weather the storm. That kind of support's not there for the small business. Bloomberg Finance reporter Shanali Basak, it is always great to see you, Shanali. Thanks for joining us. On The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.